Join your host, the accomplished Dr. Sherilyn Lee, as she welcomes the leading experts in health and well-being as they explore the advancements in natural health, physical fitness, nutrition, integrative medicine, and self-discovery. Good morning, or good day to everyone, and thank you for tuning in to another wonderful episode in Saga. And we have a wonderful show for you today because I decided in having this type of show because uh, what I was currently seeing in my practice and how people sometimes present it to the ER when I worked in emergency medicine. So today is fitness for sexual positions. And my guest is Dr. Zairef. Thank you so much for being here. It's great to be here. Thank you. And before we talk about sexual positions, I want to go more into detail. You know, it's great to have great fitness for sexual positions. And most importantly, we want to have good health. Yeah. You know, we have to good have good health. And you want to be really worked up properly, and that's what I do in my practice. Yes. Is to work up people properly in cardiovascular, part of my nonprofit as well. But mm -hmm. really check things out to see if you have a healthy heart. Yeah. Uh, and things are going on for sexual positions. Yes. You know, because we've had many people have heart attacks trying to do things in sexual positions that their heart really could not take it. Yeah. You know, so... Um, and we've had many people, <coughs> like I said, that's part of the reason some people end up in the emergency room. Uh, they never made it to me at my clinic years <laughs> later, but those are some of the things. But make mm -hmm. sure, you know, your blood pressure, pulse rate, and those things are up to par before getting into sexual positions or even having sex. Because as we know, orgasms and having sex can increase the heart rate. And if your blood pressure is already really elevated and your heart rate is really, really high, you can really get into a little trouble there. Yeah. So it's good to know those things yourself. And, you know, if you know you're on blood pressure meds, you might want to check your heart blood pressure before sex. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I think it'd be very important. And thyroid disorders can cause you to have an elevated um, heart rate, especially hyperthyroidism, uh, accelerated heart rate. So kind of, mm -hmm. you know, be mindful of what's going on with your vital signs as well. But we're going to go more into yes. sexual positions for this show. Mm -hmm. And we'll get into later on a different uh, show on vascular health and sex. Mm -hmm. But right now, today, our show is fitness. And so you're a fitness expert here. Yes. And so let's talk about sexual fitness and different things you can do for fitness. For Well, fix, uh, the, the, um, one of the things is just like you were just uh, saying, uh, you know, being fit is very important to last through the, the, the whole wonderful experience of sex which mm -hmm. we all eventually will have if you haven't and all of us that's how we got here yes so it's a really beautiful experience uh, uh some of the things that uh you want to do to make sure is like first of all being in shape to last through most people even if they're they're not feeling that well and they're not fit they can have sex and and enjoy it even if they're they they can be handicapped and find a way to enjoy sex mm -hmm. they can be mm -hmm overweight and find a way to have sex they exactly. can be you know never went to a gym ever and have sex you exactly. know exactly so it's for somebody for everybody but some of the things that's very important for you to um, um, make sure that your body is in shape uh, respiratorily you want to be able to breathe uh, yeah, exactly. that's about number three in the world as far as fatalities um, because people have lower uh, respiratory problems and they can't uh, either the jog run or just be uh, over uh, uh, exerted or work up a sweat because mm -hmm. they don't mm -hmm. have they can't uh, the capacity of their lungs they might have emphysema or asthma or any other kind mm -hmm. of CO PD and so forth but by just getting in the exercise program and working out will really help you tremendously to breathe deeper and make sure that you sweat in a little bit because bring up that heart rate where you can keep it strong. You're speaking in terms of breathing. So yeah. let's show some people. Why don't you give a, a good demonstration on good abdominal breathing okay. exercise. Let's well, do that. In breathing, one of the things that most of us breathe like 
this. We'll like huff and puff and I'll blow your house down, that kind. Mm-hmm. But actually, we should use this a dome-shaped muscle. Uh, the diaphragm. Called, the diaphragm, mm-hmm. yes. And when you inhale, uh, what happens is this diaphragm, it just it goes down. It allows air in. And when you exhale, it goes up and you, you uh, let the air out. And that's how we should breathe. Which is so, great because it's yeah. pushing up against the lungs. Yes. So it's helping you. It's actually helping you. That's, and that's when, right. And that's the exercise for the diaphragm. Diaphragm muscle yes. itself. Yes. So that's really good. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. And definitely. So, so it's just, you know, for those of you that sing, uh, it's, it's the same muscle that's used when you're holding the note, for instance. And you notice we don't breathe, we don't talk like this, and we just, you know, we don't move the shoulders and chest. Mm-hmm. And, and the reason that we don't is because our perfect, the breathing is to breathe from the diaphragm. When you inhale through your nose, Bring it down to your lungs. Bring it in your stomach, for instance, will distend when you bring in the air. And when you exhale, your stomach muscles will go in and you will, of course, relieve uh, yourself of uh, that that air. So it's important to learn how to breathe properly because if you just breathe that chest breathing, you're going to run out really fast. Yeah, you, know? you want to breathe in the oxygen. It's so important. And, and exhale the CO2. Yes. You want to breathe it in, breathe mm-hmm. in good oxygen, mm-hmm. which we don't have 90, we don't have 100% good oxygen out here anyway. No. But breathe in. So mm-hmm. it's really good to pull that in. You'll feel better through your whole yes. exercise or either in an intimate relationship, you're going to feel better. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and another thing that you can do also, you can have green plants in that room, the room that you're making love in, and you have better air to breathe in. Yes. Uh, because Not artificial. Yeah, exactly. Like it's a said. big difference. Nothing like nature. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the things. You can also, in order to increase your breathing, uh, some light jogging, some low impact um, um, exercise classes, aerobic is, is great. You can even do other exercises. Yeah, like I just want to add, since we're there and mm-hmm. the jogging, uh, research has shown men who do walking exercise, it really helps more with ED. Oh. With a sec- a erectile dysfunction. dysfunction. So mm-hmm. just from um, getting some walking in, it yes. really helps with that. So we want to do exercises that's going to help with ED yes. as well, so yes. with the men. That's so great. keep keep that in mind, too. So mm-hmm. get out and start moving your body. You want to have the best relationship and experience as possible. Yes. You know, uh, the couple's. You mm-hmm. want to have a great relationship. But so try to keep that in mind. Well, let me let you go ahead. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a very great point. You know, it, even when you talk about a man's, uh, when you talk about a man's mojo, especially when you talk about the prostate. See, a lot of times if you, you while you're exercising, while you're working out, having a strong or healthy prostate is very important because we want to make sure that we have those pre-ejaculate uh, fluids mm-hmm. uh, 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 in place. Uh, we also want to enjoy an elongated or uh, at least uh, have an erection long enough to finish uh, the business that you started. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you don't take care of yourself, some of us erectile dysfunction is not even being able to get an erection so exactly uh and some people that may have an erection and lose it very um uh um swiftly during uh the act and if you just tuned in you're you're in you're listening to uh dr zarif and myself dr Sherilyn lee and Mm -hmm. our topic is sexual fitness for sexual positions yes so we want to be fit completely fit so let exactly. me let you go on in case someone just tune in oh yeah yeah mm-hmm. it, it's really important that you know first of all look at sex as something that's a beautiful experience and all sex isn't equal but you know um it is uh very very uh helpful for you to be in the best shape especially when we're talking about we just talk about the uh, cardiovascular cardiovascular respiratory but, too and respiratory is important but range of motion like your rom is very important so that comes down to using some of the lower muscles in the body so some of the things your quadriceps your hamstrings you have the longest muscle in the body the sartorius and then you have the gracilis and the semimembranosus slow down a little bit we want everybody to take all this in you're gonna they're gonna focus on these muscles that they're not used to hearing that way oh okay Okay, so well the muscles between your legs and the muscles on the outside especially the they call it the it band or the iliotibial tract uh that's the band that uh Uh, shapes the uh, upper thigh 
And all of these muscles, along with your glutes, your gluteus maximus, minimus, and medius there's muscles. there's a set of muscles back there. It's not just Just the one. Hips. It's not yeah. just one muscle yeah. back there, guys yeah. and ladies that we sit on. Yeah. There is a group of muscles right there. Yes. Mm -hmm. And these are the muscles that you'll use as you gyrate, uh, along with the muscles as you gyrate? in the front. As you move your, okay, your okay. body. Okay, <laughs> okay. I'm going to make you say it, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. As you, yeah, as you, uh, you got to make it happen. Okay. You can't just sit somebody on a spin cycle and have the machine do all the work. Okay. You know? <laughs> so okay. Uh, we uh, um, also have muscles in the front, the quadriceps, along with there's another muscle right on top of the quadriceps, the iliopsoas major and minor muscles. So as you penetrate forward, you use those, those the back muscles. And as you pull back, you use the front muscles. So it's juxtaposed. Okay. So keep those in mind. Those are the muscles you want to exercise. Yes. Now, people who are getting in positions like um, lying on their back, head and their feet straight up in the air, uh -huh. or trying to put their feet behind the back of their head, mm -hmm. uh, actually presented a couple of times. And I've seen that in the ER where they really had pulled the muscle or they had not just pulled it, but they did some other things, too. Yeah. Where if they had been working out, they would not have had those type of spasms and muscle pain the way they did. Because a lot of yeah. people complain about when they're in certain positions having muscle spasms. Yes. Yeah, because they've not used these muscles before. And then they talk about the soreness they have after. Yeah. Um, so if you gradually, if you work on fit, fitness. Yes. Or positions mm -hmm. as well. But just fitness overall for being healthy. Yeah. You're able to do much more you you have much more flexibility yes so that's more. why you're talking about the muscles inside the thigh yes which is very important because some people never really use those muscles mm -hmm. until then yeah and you need to start exercising and utilizing those muscles so exactly just send them some exercises to do for those muscles yeah some of the things you can do you can do squats uh, that's mm -hmm. everybody can do squats so you know just bending down going up you know you don't have to be an athlete to do that uh, the other is like when you now part let's just just go back a little bit with the squats okay. now should the spine be straight to do a squat or just yeah. if you are if you're if you're not in great shape and you know you have a bad back for those people that are older and bending forward you know you might have to do that but you just work with what you have where you are mm -hmm. until you can get your back straighter get better position but don't let yourself don't stop yourself because you're saying oh my back should be straight or my back should be whatever right. just if you bending over a little bit that's fine squat as low as you can where your knee will say okay that's enough mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. you start building up those muscles some of you are in great shape and then you can do hop squats you know jumping squats you can do um, uh, air jacks there's a lot of other uh, exercises that you can do to utilize the yeah, lower body i don't do air jacks yeah, so. air jacks are aren't aren't for not, the average not person ready. yeah <laughs> okay so <laughs> not uh, yet not yet yeah, but this yeah this uh also uh <laughs> knee tucks you know you can jump in the air and you bring your knees up to your chest and and those are very good especially for the abdominal the area and we call that the core those core exercises are very important because when you're having sex of course you're using your lower bottom and then you use a lot of your core muscles so mm -hmm. there's a lot of ab muscles that you're putting in uh, in uh, motion if not you will find yourself uh, getting tired rapidly mm -hmm. uh, that may interfere with the euphoric feeling that you're looking for you'll probably finally get there but um, lasting longer and being more in control uh, is is very important uh, to most people that uh, want to enjoy right. sex so give them some exercises they can do while lying in bed before maybe that they can get up in the morning and start doing when they first wake up yeah so very simple exercises is going to help with fitness okay. or posi uh, positions as well but let's let's try some simple things because we have a lot of older people mm -hmm. and i won't 
you know, our very mature audience. Yes. You know, that might want to start doing some things while they're just lying down in bed before they even get out of bed. Okay. Okay. Well, some of the things, say you're lying down on your back, for instance. <laughs> yes. Now, if you're lying down on your back, what you can do is you can take up one leg at a time, pull it up to your chest, and just hold it, hold your And do knee. your deep breathing exercises yes. while you're doing this Inhale, well. exhale, inhale, exhale. And remember using your diaphragm, not your chest when you're breathing. Mm -hmm. So you, you bring up and then you go to and the how other. How many sets should a, should a person do of those? Well, if you're just starting off, you do what you can. Say, like, you take your leg up and you hold it for a count of ten. Good. One, two, three, and so forth. And then you go to the other leg. And you do that maybe two sets. Two sets. A set means that you're going to do both legs. After you do those both legs, ten counts each, that's a set. And go and do another set. Take your time. Don't make it too Definitely. But you don't put yourself under a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. The other is just a, a, a V... Um, a V stretch where you put both of your legs in the air and you just open slowly wherever, you know, your ROM is allowing you to go. ROM means range of motion. And wherever that allows you to go, let those muscles stretch by themselves. Um, you don't need to force it because you'll get micro tears and your body will have to heal. That's where you feel the soreness. This is what happened to people coming into the ER. Yeah. Or seeing an orthopedic later. Yeah, when yeah. you if you go straight into banging, it's not going to work for you. You need to like work yourself up to the banging. You can get uh, very. I don't like banging. That sounds <laughs> not nice. Okay. Well, you know, some people like it rough. Uh, <laughs> it, people have different styles. Like some people like to be made love to, and other people like you know mm -hmm. to yeah, do the other thing. Strokes so, for different folks. Yeah, right. Literally. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you have and you have other people that don't like just the you can get yourself in condition for other, you know, uh, scissors like a double scissors. Um, you can have, you know, uh, the so-called doggy style. And there's other different ways to have sex and all of it doesn't take place in bed. And then there's an exercise while in bed. To put yourself in, in for strengthening the, the, the paravertebral muscles in the spine. Uh -huh. So there's a set of muscles that run along the spine that you can exercise by putting yourself in doggy style in the bed. To try to do this when you're alone. Mm -hmm. And exercise by lifting your back up like yeah. a cat style mm -hmm. or whatever and going back down. Mm -hmm. And that really helps strengthen the lower back. Yes. Yes, and you can also do that. Those of you that can't make it to that position, you can do that same exercise lying down by arching your back up and then letting it go. Arching right. it up mm -hmm. and letting it go. And this really, really helps you. And ladies can also do the incorporate that in Kegel exercises too. You know, and yeah. that is. We're gonna, I'm going to go a little bit more in Kegel, but I'm going to let okay. you go ahead with this. Yes. All right. <laughs> so, you know, all of these wonderful things, Kegels is just, you know, uh, um, uh, controlling some of your veg area where you can tighten it up and you can open, tighten, open, tighten, open. And a lot of your OBGYNs will tell you about how you can start using that. And a lot of, uh, even your urologists will tell uh, because you have a lot of women that suffer from incontinence. Urinary incontinence. Yes. Yeah, so. yeah, that I work with. Oh, excellent. Yeah. And so while we're there, I'm just going to say, mm -hmm. In doing the Kegel exercises, if you have problems, for the men is also because the same set of muscles mm -hmm. when it comes to sphincter control, too. Yeah. So I have a device in my office that help people with their Kegel exercises. Oh, wow. So, and actually, it's a device that you can actually rent and have it at home as well. Uh, so it's for rectal prolapse in men who don't have the sphincter control in the... Um, in the, in Anus. The, in the rectum. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to clean words. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, um, but this, this machine device actually is placed in some muscle stimulator. Ah. So it stimulates the vaginal wall for the women mm -hmm. um, for having better sex, but it also helps with the men uh, to have better sex as well. Wow. Yeah, because it also helps with the muscles. So it's helping all the pelvic floor mm -hmm. for the men and also for the women. Wow, so I have good. two devices that I use, one that you can buy and the other one you can rent or you can buy it. It's a little more costly, mm -hmm. but you can tell. And I tell women, if you really, you know, a lot of times I would make sure, you know, my hands are clean. If you insert it into your vagina and you really clamp down with your 
vagina on your finger, you can actually feel the pressure because even though you could tell a person to do Kegel, they don't really get it to do a hold and like you're going to use the restroom but holding your urine yeah. and uh, count, do a count of, you know, 10 or so and then let go. Yes. And you can do this throughout the day. Yes. Because a lot of women anytime. are having, anytime, yeah. a lot of women are having problems with not just urinary incontinence, but sometimes they've had children. Uh, and then the vaginal wall becomes a less not as tight as they want it to be. Right. But doing the Kegel exercise. And then to know that you're doing it right, like I said, if you place your finger there and you do the Kegel exercise, you can feel the pressure around your finger. If you're not feeling the pressure, then um, you're not doing it correctly. Right. And yeah. it's not going to be beneficial for you. But Kegel is phenomenal. It was designed by Dr. Kegel mm -hmm. himself. And there's a lot of information out there on it. But there's things you can do yourself. So right. the exercise, and if you have problems in that area, we do have a machine. Actually, uh, our former Congresswoman, Diane Watson, is my spokesperson for urinary incontinence. Oh, okay. So uh, and she has a device at home. She has been on the show to discuss it. So right. it's the Tesla machine. So... Oh. Yeah. Oh, by the same Tesla people, yeah. Wow. But okay. we have the machine in our office, and um, and it actually helps with urinary incontinence. Wow, so it's scary. how it's placed in the body. So you go through a whole little training with me, and then we will set you up to uh, have a better, much better. I got to come over there yeah. to see some of your, your gadgets. Oh, gosh, <laughs> I love them. But, you know, people are getting well. That's the problem. Oh, that the same is... machine has so many criteria and things we can do to help you to heal yeah and that's what it's all about is healing yeah. from this drugger i came about this device to a dear friend of mine mm -hmm. uh, which i won't say his name he's a doctor in the mm -hmm. community and he's just a little guy he's a real little guy and he's engaged to this woman and he was like oh my goodness um she's telling me i need to go to the gym i need to go to the gym i need to have muscles mm -hmm. so he got the tesla machine right and put it on his biceps and everywhere you could place the pads and it exercises your body while he was watching TV. Wow. So he said, I am just going to sit here in bed and do all my uh, exercising with the machine. And she was like, wow, you're beginning to look really great. I can't believe you've been going to the gym. When did you find time? Oh. He, I found time. Oh, wow. <laughs> but wow. it has uh, so many features, so many features yeah. of this machine that is unbelievable. So I'm just really happy that... Uh, we are, this is one of the one of the things we do in our office as well, among many. Wow! But yeah, that is incredible. So as we go moving forward past now, Kegel exercise. Yeah, well, Thank spe you. speaking of also healing, you know, sex is one of the best therapies for relaxation. Mm -hmm. So in learning to breathe and learning to uh, be in harmony with your partner. All of this is a really important part to, especially if a person is under a lot of stress. Um, you know, sex again is one of the best, uh, uh, relievers of, uh, stress. For who? Uh, the man or the woman? Both. Okay. Whomever. Just want to get a straight. Yeah. Well, okay. I mean, sometimes, but sometimes the men are under yeah. a lot of stress and they just think they could just, you know, start and, it's a little bit more to it. Yeah, because yeah. you don't want to feel that your partner is just a dump where you're just dumping all of your woes yeah, out no, on them. No. And, you know. But um, it is um, one of the best therapies today as far as relaxing and getting away from that. I wouldn't uh, uh, suggest to make that a tool or uh, make it a make it a tool but don't make it a crutch right uh, because every time you get upset baby you got you got a moment you know <laughs> so i need to know. be stress free <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 relieve me yes so but the other muscles that are important is when you move around just like if you think about a hula hoop your waist uh mm -hmm. just like allow yourself if you or if, get a hula hoop they're fun yeah yeah. Um, the uh, if you're dancing, uh, you know, dance a little more where you relaxing. All of those are using the muscles that you use while you're having sex. Um, your knees are very important to have strong knees for those of you that may uh, uh, have standing sex with your partner, holding your partner while you're having sex in your arms uh, with her legs up or against the wall where you can have. Uh, there's a standing six nine. There's 
there's many positions that I'm sure a lot of people can be more creative than myself, but um, there are a lot of positions that require stability and you need to have a strong body. Other than that, you can throw your back out, you can strain your shoulders, yes. you can have neck problems and so forth just by or having sex. if you drop sex. that person, you're going to cause some... Yeah, you might have Seriously. a suit on your hand, but you know <laughs> that's 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 a, no. You shouldn't don't don't pick up. You know, do those things on the bed first if you want to. You know, get somewhere soft because that's quite that would I, definitely. I wouldn't say that because you may fall off uh, the bed. So yeah, well, you know, there's some things that you can do like in squatting positions. You know, like before some you stand before up, you lift you know? a person. You know, <laughs> see how many pounds you know you're going to be yeah. lifting before you go lifting the person because you might be there for. You know, a couple of minutes or right. not hours, but you're going to be there for a minute. Yeah. So yeah. just see how your endurance is and, you know, lifting, doing the weights. What do they call them? The curls with your legs? Yeah, or you can do curls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can just see how much weight your legs and hamstrings and things are going to take. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most people, if they start yeah. in a little early when they're feeling, because you can tell as soon as you can tell if you're going to lift your partner up and if you... If that's a person. Well, you see that in a lot of movies. I mean, there's so much on the screens now that they show, and they make it look like it's so easy. Yeah. And people try to follow some of those same criteria or right. same routines, and that doesn't work. Yeah, well, so boss, you want to have a healthy body. That's the number one. And, and well, you know, Gay, about over 60% of um, men and women are overweight. So. That might not be a good move anyway. You know, if, if somebody's too heavy, you know, you might want to just use some alternatives. And there's plenty of alternatives, but some people still want to get freaky with it uh, at any size. So it's... Uh, yeah. And they, they're going to find, you find a way what's comfortable for you. Yeah. Everybody find what is definitely comfortable for them. Yes. So um, I just want to say that, you know, with having... Uh, a great sex life or a healthy sex life and yeah. great fitness. The most important thing, again, is stay fit. Yeah. Don't just get fit because you know we're going to have uh, or go exercise that day because yeah. we're going to have a great night and tonight. Yeah. And some people wait for like holidays. I know some people <laughs> know some people who did like for Valentine's Day I and wouldn't be in that. birthday. And, you know. That's terrible. So I know, but you believe me, you'd be surprised at <laughs> yeah. what I hear. Yeah. And then there's those who said I'm going to refrain from sex yeah. until I meet the right person. So they and have not it. have sex for like years. I don't think that. I mean, that's that's crazy. Anyway. No, but I hear that a lot, but especially you know, the people in churches. Yeah, they say, you know what? I'm I'm just gonna stay celibate. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna stay celibate. And then they until. have sex with somebody that turns out not to be the right person. Then they do the same thing. Then their thing body is so out of shape. Then they don't enjoy it anyway. Yes, because, that's, you know. that's. And they think that it's because of maybe I haven't had sex in so long but if you keep yourself physically fit and you have yeah. engaged in a relationship even with your spouse i have many people who are married and haven't had sex for a long time Ooh, bless them yeah i know i i, we, I we have talks about that yeah but. i can't so, you know so sex to me still is, stay is a, physically fit keep yourself physically fit yeah sex mm -hmm. is a part of your homeostasis that's you mm -hmm. know to have balance and to have uh, the best the ultimate health sex is a very important part mm -hmm. Un unfortunately we've been taught to be shy about it embarrassed to talk about oh we talking about sex you see grown people now if you say penis they'll still chuckle just like they when we were in in junior high school or something mm -hmm. oh vagina vagina you know it's like all females have vaginas all guys have penises but it's, mm -hmm. it's a way to have the discussion and to enjoy it uh, in, in a way that is uh, respectful to each other and something that you can look forward to. Mm -hmm. Because Actually, I came up with a product. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go into details now because we'll be putting it back on the um, on the Internet now that I have uh, a wonderful person that I've just met for my social media. Yay. We're going right. to... Uh, be putting everything back together. So it was definitely a product for men and women so they can become closer in their relationship and start talking about it. Right. Because I, I know you're talking to my own parents to certain things. My mother knew I was writing a book on relationships years ago. Which right. I had to finish it up one day. Right. And she said, well, I hope you don't put in there masturbation and I hope you don't put in there this and I hope you don't put in there that. I said, mm -hmm. okay, mom, mm -hmm. I'm not going to promise you, but right. Okay. 
I'm going to respect you. Maybe certain parts I won't let you read. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's just part of a healthy life and healthy relationship. And know your own body. You have to know your own body. Mm -hmm. You know, before, before someone can pleasure you, you have to know what pleasures you. Because yeah. most women are. That helps. <laughs> you know, most women yeah. don't even know. A lot yeah. of women that I spoke to just don't know. Well, so. well I think the statistic is that, uh, what, 75% of women don't have orgasm anyway. You got 25% that can enjoy multiple mm -hmm. orgasms. So it, it's like it's not, you know, for some people just having an orgasm. And and then, you know, it's the mental, the mental conditioning also. If a person, some people have to be taught how to relax while they're having sex because they're usually they're distracted or mm -hmm. they might even be in fear or embarrassment or they're concentrating where I don't want them to see the part of my stomach or he might say I don't want her to see this or whatever that with the distractions is very very difficult to enjoy the whole full mm -hmm. experience of sex I want to also talk about we talked about some of the good stuff about sex the bads, there's a couple of things that you may not want to do as far as positions in sex. Now, one of the most dangerous uh, positions is when the woman is on top. Not the man, but the, when the woman is on top mm -hmm. in a missionary position and she's, she has more control. But because of the pressure and her weight and the position of the penis, it could definitely injure the penis to the point that you have to have an operation for a repair. Really? It I've repair never itself. seen any. Okay. Yeah. Is there, is you but can, not that I've seen a lot, but... Sure. Working yeah. in the working place. Okay. That's that, funny right there. That in the working place. place yeah. <laughs> but um, having a, a uh, um, uh, having sex where there is pounding and the weight of it, even if you're. Let, let me just say something. I don't mean okay. to stop you, but I am. Because that did happen to a person. Yeah. But he had a penile implant. Uh, oh. And she was on top. And yeah. I had this person. Uh, I was working in a clinic, and he said, my friend's penis got broken. Well, mm -hmm. he was from a different country, so yeah. he just kept saying, it was broken, it was broken. Right. And he kept, he was really upset about it. And I'm like, well, how did it get broken? Mm -hmm. I mean, I couldn't envision broken, you know. Yeah. But he had an implant, and that's what happened. And she was a little heavy, yeah. and she was on top. And it actually, the implant bent, and it did go, it went right through the skin. Yeah, and ooh, yeah. that's an ugly one. But you can actually yeah. you can injure it even without the implant. Yes. You can you can injure because we have strong muscles there. Uh, however, those muscles can be strained and those muscles can go beyond their ROM, and it can cause an extreme uh, pain. The inflammation uh, you can have onsets of priapism. Uh, priapism is when you have an erection when the body or the penis wants to repair itself, but it remains erected. It's a long, long erection those you know, some seen. people might mm -hmm. be smiling oh yeah i want that but no you don't it's no. very painful mm -hmm. and it takes the time you can't put ice on it or anything no. like that uh with the patients that i've had with priapism i always uh, teach them how to we get the blood to go to other areas of the body mm -hmm. and that's the only way we can take the concentration off the penis they also have injections that you can put in to relax the muscles of the penis which is painful because yes, it is. you know but those no we topical. Did it, we did those in the ER, so mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's, those it's I did bad. see. And the other position is uh, any positions that like even. If you're even in doggy style and you're, again, the banging, the the hard hitting and stuff, which happens uh, sometimes, uh, again, if you should miss the orifice or the opening and you hit the side or you, you're just off point, it's very easy just in that second for your penis to be pushed back or pushed to the side and cause, again, strain and injury. That inflammation is not something that you want to experience. Yeah. And I tell people there's a situation would happen to a couple of people I know. So if you know a person has seizures, do not engage in oral oh. sex. Oh, yeah. Someone did, and it bit off <laughs> the, head, the head of the penis. No, so, no, no. Because they end up having a seizure. So kind of know a person's history. <laughs> yeah. you know, really. That's crazy. No. <laughs> I know a couple of people yeah. that that happened to. So right, right. Kind of know the history before you engage in things like that. Yeah. And we're not going to go into health. Uh, well, Might actually, be a good time to invent like a penile helmet. <laughs> <laughs> well, then they have no pleasure if you put a 
Because the only thing I see with a helmet is something that's going to be hard, and then they're not going to feel it anyway. Well, yeah. You know. I, I guess you're right. <laughs> you're the man. You should know. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> uh, just funny. know if they have history of seizures. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, just be Well, careful. I mean, that's it. That's on that end. Yeah. Because... But any disease, I mean, like but that one, a person, because the mouth will clamp down. Yeah, that's, why that's I'm right. Saying that. and, How about and narcolepsy? Seen... Narcolepsy is a disease where you just have sudden sleep. My mother had narcolepsy. You just yeah, fall she right would to, go sleep. to sleep. I didn't no, even know funny. how we had so many siblings. <laughs> it's funny I'm if you have oral that, but... sex and narcolepsy. Bam. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't, I never did ask a couple of people that they go to sleep, but they did have narcolepsy. But, uh, yeah, that's a, that's yeah, a, yeah. But anyway, we, we, uh, <laughs> digress. <laughs> we did. <laughs> but also, you know, the health history on, on, on many levels, because I, I was telling uh, several people that I know, uh, they were men and some are women too, but mm -hmm. be careful with the oral sex if a person have HPV. You want to know kind of the health history. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I have lost two people that I know um, to throat cancer mm -hmm. because of that. So, you know. Oh, it, yeah. And I don't want to say it like that because that sounds kind of bad eating out. Mm -hmm. But uh, you got to be careful where you place your mouth. Yeah. You know, and especially in certain uh, aspects of relationships because people should be checked and should know whether or not you have something going on. You know, including other STDs and other tests. So you want to know. Yeah. Uh, I told my daughters before they were married and engaged in sex, and now I have teenage grandchildren, wow. that I believe in a full, I call it my pre-sexual examination. Because uh -huh. my pre-sexual examination, I look at everything. The rectum, penile cultures, blood tests, HPV. Um, I also want to see your H. pylori. Because H. pylori is an organism that lives in the stomach. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a bacterium. Mm -hmm. But we can blow into an instrument to see if we have it, mm -hmm. but it also can be transmitted through kissing. Mm -hmm. So I call it the kissing bacterium. Or the, I, I, I wanted to say the kissing parasite, yeah. but it's not really per se a parasite. It is a bacterium. Yeah. So, like but, it can, but it can be mm -hmm. transmitted through kissing. Yeah. So a lot of people end up with H. pylori and not even know. So, if is so, that similar to mononucleosis? No, actually, this the people is it's more stomach problems. They have some of the symptoms of a lot of person who does a lot of belching, uh, holds a lot of gas because this organism can live in hydrochloric acid. Oh, I mean, the transferring of it is through is through oral. mouth, mouth, yeah. mouth, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, the same thing, yeah, 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 the mononucleosis, right. yeah, because yeah. it is kissing. And, um, what else there? Also, hepatitis A. Hepatitis A, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So hepatitis uh, C, if or other things too, if they have bleeding gums. Uh, so if you're kissing someone with bleeding gums, I always tell people, why don't you just look into their mouth and make sure they do tongue scraping? You know, they don't have all this bacteria and stuff sitting in their mouth. You know, how do you go about that though? Because I, you know, that's what that's what everybody, you know, they ask me like, well, you know, when you meet somebody and you, you know, like sometimes you get caught up in your emotions. You know, how do you stop that emotion? Well, before you and, go out with them, you know, you, you know that's going to happen. You just you get a history before. Okay. I'm going out with you. Hey, things might lead into something else. I need to get a more of a health history. And I've been doing this for years, and the people who know me, they do the same thing. But things today happen so rapidly. Well, you, you better you know. get it. Your body is your temple. Yeah. Okay? There you, you go. Keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. And I am a Lamborghini. Mm -hmm. You know why I say a Lamborghini? Why? Because you can't test drive. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You don't test drive a Lamborghini. Now, right. you can go test drive all these other cars, yeah. but you don't test drive a Lamborghini. Oh, that's a good one. So okay. you look at yourself and, and know that your body is a temple. It's very precious. Yes. So yes, I indeed. want to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. I don't think one quick hot minute is worth me not knowing what's going on with the other person. Right. I don't, I don't feel that. And pyrea. And, and that person will be happy too to know that you're that type of person. Yeah. That I'm not going to contract something from you as well. That's, that's, that's a great point. Yeah. Because the person that has pyrrhea or periodontal disease, they're not going to like, you know, I just want to, you know, or even shankers, you know, I mean, which are all hideable, uh, you know, under your lip or under your tongue, uh, the roof of your mouth by your uvula, you know, the back of your mouth, that little thing that 
dangles in the back. All of those areas can have hidden sores there, and you can partake in a kiss and not even de- be able to detect it. And if, you know, things are to keep yourself some activated charcoal, I know it looks messy, or some colostrum. I deal with only one company. Most people know that um, because they have the best. But you could put that on your toothbrush, mm-hmm. brush your teeth with it, or have a person gargle with it real quick. Mm-hmm. And the activated charcoal is going to leave their mouth kind of dark, but keep gargling till it comes out because it kills a lot of the bacteria, especially it whitens the teeth as well, mm-hmm. the activated charcoal. But the colostrum is really good to put on the toothbrush because it goes in and start healing the gums as well. Mm. So if you have gum disease, there's other things you can make sure you're taking and stay with, and that's coenzyme Q10. Mm. You know, especially if you're on blood pressure medicines, you should be taking it anyway, because um, gum disease is going to end up leading leading to heart disease, and each tooth in your mouth, each tooth in your yeah. mouth is linked to an organ in the body as well. Mm-hmm. So you want to make sure that you know all these things are looking, you know, taken into consideration. Right. So I, you know, just keep those things with you. Yeah. I would give another one. I think people might kind of misinterpret it. But um, those two things, keep yourself some colostrum. And you can always open up a couple capsules, squish it in some water, have a person rinse their mouth out. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're going to be doing something there, and the activated charcoal. But start right. brushing your own teeth. I think it's really good. Mm-hmm. It's a good way. Because we know from working, again, from in the emergency rooms years ago, uh, we found out in the 80s, it might have been even sooner, around the 80s, uh, human bites and dog bites. So we know that there's an organism more so in the human that if you bite, we had to do a, a breast, uh, 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 remove the breast, a mastectomy on a woman because of a human bite to her breast. Mm-hmm. Because the bacterium is so, and it just goes through almost like a flesh eating disease uh, and start destroying the tissue. So a person who hit someone in the mouth, you know, uh, actually had to have his hand amputated only because the infection got so bad and he didn't realize that the infection was uh, happening that the, he ended up having to have his hand amputated. So the mouth and bites are really, really powerful. That's why the person who uh, had the human bite to the penis, one of the persons died because then he, he was too embarrassed and the infection went through the whole body, his whole body and he died from a human bite to the penis because the person had a seizure. I'm depressed right now. I need to <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. But. This time, I'm bad All right. <laughs> now, I wonder why you look like you were kind of fading. I, I was like, I, you don't see him, brothers. Do. I mean, all right. <laughs> okay. Just the idea of, you know, that's, that's just bad news right there. It is. Yeah. But, you know, we have to, you know, just be mindful. Be mindful. You know, yeah. especially when you just meet someone. And I, I always tell people, try not to do that when you just meet someone. Get involved into a whole relationship and then know the person. You know, like I said, your body is your temple. Yeah, I think some people I think some people adhere to that. But it's so many like at a party and she's looking good and she got on the short thing and got on the pumps and the legs looking good lips all shiny and stuff and a guy said you know it's just let me just i really like you but i just want to check your gums <laughs> <laughs> i don't think that's well, why would fly. he want to be kissing all over her and he just met her anyway well that's the whole i think the whole rush of, it's like you know, do i go out huh? <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> It's, the, it's the, that whole New rush, time. but mm-hmm. you know, I, I would, yeah. That's that's one of the things. Of course, you know, eventually, that's what a date is about collecting data. So uh, yeah, we you know, we went through that before yeah, on the show. Having yes. uh, making sure that you uh, making wise decisions because there might be your last decision if it's not wise. So it could be. Really, yeah. That's why I keep saying, you know, go out and have fun. You can have a lot of fun. You mm-hmm. could be out on a date and have a lot of fun. Yeah. But if you're going to go on the date, there's certain things you might want to ask as part as far as maybe that preparation of the date. Yeah, getting a you feeling of, of 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 a person's hygiene habits, you know, uh, uh, or person you don't want to be if if it's not a big thing for you know her to uh, you know I, I mean even little things like you know how important is it for you to I love to be fresh how important is it to be fresh what do you mean by fresh I mean just you know I sweat a lot and I have to change you know maybe shower a lot mm-hmm. you know do you do the same thing that kind of thing I, I, you know it's funny you said that because I have a, um, a male friend he uh, was 
He was a bodyguard, too, mm -hmm. uh, for some of the people you worked with. Yes. But anyway, he was telling me, his mother told him in growing up, do not date a woman who does not take a bath. Yeah. If she only takes well, showers, she's not clean enough. Mm -hmm. She must submerge her water, her body in a bathtub. Mm -hmm. And I said, really? Your mother told you that? He said, yeah, my mother told So mm -hmm. I've never dated a woman who did not take baths. Wow. So I said, well, how, how did you ask him that? He just said, I'm going to go take a bath. Uh, what do you put in your bath water? So he started asking that way. So right. he found a way, mm -hmm. you know. What type of yeah. toothpaste do you use? Do you use, you know, and we're into health now. Do you use a toothpaste that does not have fluoride in it? You know, what what do you do and how do you use it? Right. Do you floss? Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, it's, it's you can bring up things. Right, right. So that you would know. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly, exactly. Well, I just, I'm just blunt with it. I just am very blunt. You, you blunt even with the sexual stuff, you know? Oh, like my goodness. You yeah, I have to do like, exam. How do you like to do I it? I have to do an exam. Yeah. Yeah, I have to draw blood. Well, so let me hear some of the questions that you ask. <laughs> <laughs> when was your last HIV test? Oh, okay. Okay. That's running right out the house. <laughs> <laughs> and one person didn't date me at all. I'm like, well, maybe you had something you didn't want me to know. Right. So that was good for me to know. Right. So I didn't. I felt good. Right. So if you don't want me to do it, then mm -hmm. do it. I mean, if you don't want me to, <laughs> to, to engage in If you in don't want to do it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. I have to have lab tests. Yes. So I want to know the blood tests. And I had, you know, some people can say, well, I had it done two months ago. And they might not tell the truth. that It might have other encounters right after the blood test. So I prefer to say I'll do the lab myself. But we still, even even to that extent, you still have to have some trust in that person, right? Because what they're telling you may yeah. not be the truth at all. Yeah, you have to have trust, but I still do the blood work. Uh, oh, you take the guy? I actually do the blood work. So your date has to go Come through. Come to the clinic first. <laughs> Shit. I mean, <laughs> Whoa. Okay, that's yeah, yeah. That, that you should have a show on that. <laughs> we will. Yeah, that we will. is funny, right? There. I yeah. mean, that's but it's for those but, that but people going who know me steps. for those who know me, yeah. they know to send their 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 significant other or um not significant other, but people they want to date, they tell them to come to the they send them to me. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I do the cultures, I do the penile cultures, I do the rectal examination. Yeah. Um, and I draw the blood, and I do the HP. Look for if they don't have symptoms of H. pylori, I don't mm -hmm. do the tests. You so know, you can but. also detect through the penile cultures. Can you detect uh, if a if a guy is down low? Uh, through the rectal exam. Through the rectal, but suppose he's the giver, not the receiver. Well, that's why you do all the other tests: the chlamydia, the gonorrhea. Look at all the STDs. So I'm not gonna know, but there's if you start taking your finger i mean one of the comedians said that but it's actually true if you take your finger lightly and just kind of go toward the rectum and see how a person respond that's that's kind of a giveaway oh okay for mm -hmm. for the receiver now dr wilbert jordan talks about all the other things too that you easy ways that you can detect if a person is on the down low he's uh he runs the uh oasis clinic at uh at the Oasis Clinic for uh, Drew Hospital oh. for HIV. Oh, so man. he speaks highly of them. I have to bring him on the show. So you yeah. look for certain things. If you happen to go to their house, mm -hmm. you look for things in their cupboard, like uh, it, uh, what is for hemorrhoids, mm -hmm. for hemorrhoidal medications, yeah. Yeah. preparation H. Mm -hmm. You look for certain things in their house yeah. that are sort of giveaways. Right. But if you just watch a person, I mean, I... Um, I, mean, I, said, I was set up for a blind date once, and uh -huh. I'm like, I don't do blind dates. This is many, many, many years ago. Right. So I spoke to the person several times on the phone, mm. and when I got ready to meet them, they had on lime green pants, I mean, the color of your top, uh -huh. and some pointed toe lime green looking shoes, <laughs> and, <laughs> and had a walk because he was walking towards it. I said, That walk in those colors is right. not. Nah. <laughs> no. But, you know, you, you listen to people's conversation because yeah. this one girl called me. She said, do you think, now lime green is okay. I know it's on the screen, but it's just his walk. His walk in those shoes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that didn't hit it off to oh, me. Oh, it was funny. It's matching my, my top. <laughs> 
Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I gotta check my colors. <laughs> you don't wear the pants and the pointy shoes and, no, I don't, and I don't. you don't have a switch in your walk. No, so. no, no, no. And no. I was I was able to no. say, you know, uh I, I called him later and told him I couldn't find him. I mean, oh. that was a long time ago. But a friend of mine called me and she said, do you think this guy is gay? He just told me something that I thought was a little strange. And I'm like, what did he tell you? He said he wanted to see what it felt like to take a frozen hot dog and put it in his rectum. Whoa. And I said, well, I, I would think so. Wow, just, now, we do know women who massage or the significant other who massage the the prostate is good for prostate health. Milking. Yeah. yeah. It's good for prostate health to massage the prostate. Uh-huh. So that doesn't make you a gay person. Yeah. That doesn't make you a gay person at all. But for That's a finger up the rectum, rectum everybody. Yeah. So but if a person say that he wanted to see what it felt like to put a frozen hot dog in his rectum, they asked her and she called me and I said, Well I would do all the blood tests and then just watch his behavior. Well, I'm, that wasn't a giveaway right there. I mean, well, I was told it, I have a actually, cold hot dog I, up there, but no, it wasn't cold. It was frozen. A fro- yeah, I mean, <laughs> if it's cold, if it's frozen, yeah. But I mean, yeah, okay. I mean, you that you don't need to do any tests after that, do you? Well, I actually told her I would, I would, you know, if he asked her that, I think he was trying to tell her he was right that he was bisexual. Children, please don't try this at home. What you just heard was just. <laughs> We're just having a conversation here, and I know you. <laughs> Thank you for that just disclaimer. Joined in, heard about the frozen hot dog up your butt. Yeah. No. Please put it in context. Okay. Rewind the tape. <laughs> <laughs> Watch it from the beginning. <laughs> Get the whole story. Fitness for sexual positions. Yes. Okay. And good sexual health. Yes. What we were all about today, and I yes. want to thank everyone for tuning in to thank listen. You. So, in one minute or so or mm-hmm. less, mm-hmm. look into the eyes of our audience, and what would you want to leave with them? Well, I want to. Well, I always want to invite you where I am, so you can keep in contact. I'm at uh, 5840 Latierra Boulevard in Los Angeles every Monday and Wednesday at 6:30. Come and work out mm-hmm. with us at Rhythm Fitness, and you can get me on at, at Dr. Farid Zarif. Uh, on Twitter okay. and Facebook. And uh, you gave a lot of good tips today uh, Thank you. And for the show, day or night or whenever time you're listening. If you have any other questions, you can always contact me uh, at New Wellness Healthcare. Our phone number is going to be listed there. But we know for good physical health is diet, nutrition, good attitude, a mental Best. attitude, yeah. your past history of relationships. Please don't take those into your new relationship because that will cause you some problems and stress as well. Just leave things where they are and know that you're now in something that's great and going to be good for you. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, meditate and pray over these people before you, you enter in a relationship in the first place. You want to know how compatible you are before you start exchanging body fluids in the first place. And I don't think you should do that until you really know a person. Uh, that's kind of where I am with everything. But I want to thank everyone for tuning in and listening to the show. I hope that uh, the show was edifying uh, for you, along with I hope that the show was something that's going to help uh, help you laugh along the way because yeah. we know releasing these wonderful healing endorphins keeps the body healthy as well. Find some joy in your life and love each other. And again, as I end my show, what do I always say? Because we know the great I am is so powerful. So I want everyone to repeat after me. I am. I am. So grateful. So grateful. That I am. That I am. A magnet. A magnet. For miracles. For miracles. Now today I want you to take time to hug yourself. If you don't receive a hug from someone else, hug yourself as hard as you can. Love yourself. Those are all the things that are free and great for your immune system. And until we have a chance to be in front of the camera again. Have a blessed day. Join us every Wednesday live at 11 a.m. for New Wellness TV with Dr. Lee. Remember, healthy mind, healthy body.